The Auburn Tigers land not one, not two, but three transfers that can make an immediate impact in 2023. Even temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. The everydayers out there know that every Monday we are joined by Lindsey Crosby, host of Locked On MLB Prospects and writer at Auburn Daily. Dot com And boy, do we have a lot to get to. Auburn adds Shane Hooks, Cyrus Dumas, and Steven Sings via the transfer portal this weekend. Two of those are official at the time of us talking about this. Cyrus Dumas, uh, it sounds like there's a few other things that need to be done, but he will most likely be an Auburn Tiger. We're going to have this conversation today, assuming that he is. And of course, Auburn baseball is the hottest team in the country, we'll discuss all this on today's show. Lindsey, Shane Hooks, the former Jackson State wide receiver. He was the guy in the receiving game for Jackson State and Deion Sanders' prolific offense a year ago. Also did some stuff at Ohio before transferring over to Jackson State. But Lindsey, the more I look at this guy, 6'5", 200 pounds, and knows how to use it, you can't watch a few plays of this guy without seeing him mossing someone or creating some sort of separation. I think it's a bit of a stretch. He's got to go out and win it, of course. But Shane Hooks, he could be the best wide receiver in this offense. Yeah, it's it's. this is another move that raises the floor and significantly raises the ceiling. You yeah. have a guy who's done this at like in college football because a lot of your talent was either unproven like Cam Brown or untested, even like a Burton who you brought in. And so it's a guy that has, I'm not going to say high level experience. I mean, Ohio, Jackson state, but he's been successful and you have college tape to see what does and doesn't work well. And then something I always bring up every time you bring in a transfer with a couple years of eligibility is he's been in a college weight room. You've already done a lot of that physical development. Uh, He's worked on technique, things like that. And so it's, honestly, it kind of feels like you shouldn't be able to get a player who could be your number one receiver this late in the transfer portal period, but Auburn somehow does it, and Hugh Freeze has just brought in just a, a massive transfer portal class, and it's like, this is this is kind of cool. This is what it feels like to be hyped about recruiting, right? Like, Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, after the three this weekend, Auburn's landed 21 guys via the portal, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. So Shane Hooks has one year left, and I think that's kind of you know plays into what you were saying about you know it's weird that we got a guy of this caliber this late in the process, but I think he realizes his frame, you know, 6'5", 200 pounds. I mean, the NFL is going to like that, assuming he can put up any sort of numbers in the SEC. All of a sudden, it kind of changes the conversation around him from a scouting perspective. It's like, oh, okay, you can do it at HBCU level. You can do it at Ohio. Can you do it at the SEC? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you know that that's something that changes the conversation around you. And so he probably took his time, right? Ole Miss was a big part of this. He was previously committed to Ole Miss um, a few years ago, I think, before he chose Jackson State. I believe I believe that's how that worked, and I think it was a mutual parting of ways. But a lot of people thought Ole Miss would be the favorite here, and I don't know. He, he may have been, and it may have been a simple thing where it still didn't work out. I, I don't know. I don't know, but. I just think when you look at Shane Hooks and Jair Shorter and Camden Brown, I think those three guys are going to be your top three as far as you know what this looks like in the pecking order in this receiving room going into fall camp. And I think there's some dudes that are really, really going to possibly have their feelings hurt this fall with, with some guys that kind of stinks that stuck around. These guys that were kind of in the too deep and all of a sudden, where's their playing time going to come from in 2023? They may have to wait for the future moving forward. But I love this because Hooks, a guy like Shane Hooks is thinking about what is the best option for me to get to the NFL. And his decision was Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze, he believes, is his ticket, his last chance, his last leg of college football. Very long leg, may I add. And, and, and he chose but, Hugh Freeze. He's betting on Hugh Freeze getting him there. You have to feel good about the evaluation from his perspective. And also, yeah. what does that say about the work that Auburn's done turning this roster around? And 
you know, there's there's a very real possibility that if you don't change the quarterback room, if you don't change the offensive line room, then you don't get guys like a Shane Hooks to transfer to Auburn. Guys that are, I'm not going to say borderline NFL guys, but are NFL frames that need the production to match the measurement. I like yeah, yeah, I like how you worded that. Yep. And so, like, because you've done so much good work, you've brought in a Peyton Thorne. Because you've brought in so many offensive linemen and all these guys who can... Uh, Take this Philip Montgomery offense, one L, not two. Just be correct. Clear. One L. That's correct. Um, you can you now like this is a vote of confidence from not just the coaching staff, not just Auburn administration, but like this is people outside in college football. Twenty one young men who said, "Yeah, we believe in what Hugh Freeze is trying to do, what he can do, what he's proven to have done as a developer of men," and I am very excited to be able to go and add Shane Hooks to the wall of receivers that Auburn's gotten to the NFL. We're taking full credit for this. Oklahoma taught us how this works. One season, that's all you need. That's take all you need. This. That's right. That's right. And, and we'll see. And there's some other guys that could take a big step forward, too. I mean, Jair Shorter, I think, is one of those guys. Mardner, I mean, in theory, I, 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 think, the, I think the recent run on wide receiver acquisitions hurts Nick Mardner. I think it hurts guys like Jay Farron and Amari Kelly. Mm -hmm. I think all of a sudden, you know, when you look at Burton, the Ohio State transfer, his competition and battle with Javarius Johnson will be fascinating. And a lot of this has to do with how Peyton Thorne likes these dudes. It feels comfortable throwing to them. We all kind of assume Peyton Thorne's going to be the starter. Some people don't, but we, we do here on the show. And so I, I think that's all going to come into play. And also, you know, Hugh Freeze likes these big body dudes that can win 50-50 balls. And We've really only seen Camden Brown, and most of that's been in practice, but we've really only seen Camden Brown do this on this roster. And so can Nick Marner do it with his size? Can Jair Shorter do it with his size? He's done it more with separation when he was at North Texas, but still cost him 50-50 balls. Shane Hooks, he's done it. He has absolutely done it. And he has mossed some people and really, really hurt some people's feelings. So we'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. But all in all, like you said, worst case, the floor goes up just a little bit. That's the worst case scenario with Shane Hooks. Yeah, and it's something where like I'm kind of imagining now you've got shorter. Feels like he's kind of, he's that guy that could take the top off the defense. Hooks kind of feels like he could do some of anything. He's your number one. He can. I mean, he can. He can go deep. He can go underneath. He can go across the field. Do whatever you need. Uh, give me some sort of slot guy. And you mentioned the great battle between Johnson and Burton's going to be coming. Somebody to run short routes, crossers, things like that. You've upgraded the tight end with, with Rivaldo Fairweather. Sure. I mean, you have a lot of, yes, new pieces, and they have to integrate in, but uh, you've added a lot of size all the way across the offense. You've yep. added a lot of experience, and in this transition year, not all these guys have a ton of eligibility. I think Fairweather's a senior. Some of these linemen, Jones and Britton, are seniors. Uh, but you, you've given yourself the ability to immediately, like we said, raise the floor, raise the ceiling as well, and uh, help these younger players we have questions about like a Jay fair or something like that. Give them a chance to like to learn. They're not forced to do it and us count on them right away. And I think that's going to be huge ultimately sure. down the line for Amari Kelly and Jay fair in their junior and senior years. And look, this can, this can help Camden Brown too. I mean, adding yeah. other talent is going to help Camden Brown as well. I mean, it, I think now the defense has to focus on a lot of different folks. So that is something that we haven't really been able to say in a hot minute. And of course, this is still all on paper. They've got to go out and do it. But as far as things stand on May 22nd, that's um, that's a win. That's a win for sure. Cyrus Dumas, the New Mexico State corner is interesting. It's an interesting addition. And I want to talk about why in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Lindsay, you love all the flavors that they offer, specifically the churro flavor. That is your favorite. I love mm -hmm. any of the peanut butter brownie flavors, and they've got a bunch of them. You can see them all at built.com, but all of these bars are covered 100% in delicious, decadent chocolate, and they are unbelievably good, unbelievably high in protein. They are very low in calories. You need to check all of them out. If you want to get swole like Lindsay, it's because he eats built bars, and he can eat them because... They are available all over the place, built.com, or you can head over to the club, Sam's Club, Walmart, 
your local grocery store. Lindsay goes to the grocery store. He's big yeah. on grocery stores. He's also big on Built Bar. So head over to Built.com. Use promo code locked on 15 locked on 15 to get 15% off your order or Sam's Club, local grocery store. Check them out, Built.com. All right, Lindsay, Cyrus Dumas, the corner from New Mexico State. I think the addition of him is interesting because there's a there's a narrative of Daryl, and I talked about this may have been last week when Daryl came on. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a narrative that Auburn's cornerback room is very deep. And I don't know if I buy that. I think it's very good. Yeah. I love DJ James. I love Kay and Lee. I love Nehemiah Pritchett. I think I love JD Rim. He needs to be healthy, but I, I think I love what he certainly can be. Um, assuming everything recovers well and he continues to develop as a player. I think I love him as well. But you need more than four guys, especially if Keontae Scott may play some nickel as well. And JD Rim played some nickel last year, different regime, but we'll certainly see what that looks like. But I think you need more than four corners to rely on this year. And I think there's some young guys that they like, but I don't know if they really want those guys to play in 2023. So I think when you look at Cyrus Dumas, I think he's a great depth piece. Maybe he can play on special teams this year. And then when half of these corners, when everybody goes to the NFL minus K and Lee and JD Rim, all of a sudden you can look at it and say, okay, he's got a path to playing time in 2024. So I, I think this addition serves more than one purpose. That was the big thing I was looking at is Nehemiah Pritchett, senior. DJ James, senior. Uh, you know, Keontae Scott, junior, but draft draft eligible. And he could probably go. Could, yeah, that's a Juco, right? He could go. And so it's like, yeah, like you said, J.D. Rim, K and Lee. And then it's like, okay, um, that's where Cyrus Dumas comes in. It's something where year one is about checking the the level of competition, working on technique, things like that. I mean, he's a guy that he started off at Independence Community College, which has put out some good players, went to New Mexico State for two years. So I think he's familiar with Auburn a little bit there because of that. And then now is coming here. You'll have a, but one of those years had to be 2020, I think, right? Yeah, so he should have two more mm-hmm. years. I can't do math right now. It's late. But the point is... He could is, have three, right? In theory, he could have three. Well, we're going into the 24 season, so we played in 21, 22, and 23. So he couldn't, could he? He didn't. He wasn't around in 2020, was he? I guess not. Yeah. I don't know. Either way. So, but like it gives you something where you have time to one, get him in a weight room. He's 5'10, 170, but then also uh, get him, like again, working on technique, doing all that stuff. And if somebody goes down this year, and then best case scenario, after people are graduated and or drafted next year, you have him available to do some more work. Uh, I like, it's, I'm going to say I like, I like the idea of adding something, someone with multiple years of eligibility. I honestly do not know a lot about Cyrus Dumas. He was not a guy we heard a lot about leading into the commitment. Obviously, they were working behind the scenes. Stealthily, we didn't know about it, but either way, good to bring on somebody with multiple years of eligibility because your defensive back room is very deep. Your cornerback room, not as much. Yeah. he. I think he could do two more if he redshirted one of those years. Okay. Or three. I, I think he's got two, but I, I think he's got three years to play two. So he'll probably just play two. But worth noting, and I will fact check myself on that before we record again. But just looking at New Mexico State's bio on him, I think that's right. Um, but yeah, I, I love the addition of him just as because you need another dude. And it also, Lindsay really seems like he wants to be here. I think it was his interview with on three where he's like, he talks about how like scratch and claw to get to this point. And I'm going to finish my career at Auburn. Like, Let's I like go, that. Baby. Yeah. If you want to be here, like be here. That's great. That's Run through a brick wall. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, Auburn's got a good track record with corners. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Uh, all right. Steven sings. He is a former Liberty standout, part of a Liberty defensive front last year that was third in the country in rushing the passer, which is great. That's, that's good, right? Third. That's very good. And there's more. There's a lot more than three teams in college football, and they're top three. So that's Can that's you fact exciting. check that too, please? Can you um, fact check that there are more than three teams in college yeah, football? Yeah, yeah, I'll get back to you on that as well, for sure. I watch a lot of ESPN. They only talk about like three teams. That's true. That's certainly true. And sadly, Auburn's not really one of them. That's why people come here. Thank yep. you. Thank mm-hmm. you for coming here and making us your first listen every day. So I think, I think when you look at like what Jeremy G- Garrett did last year with Liberty, he knows who Steven Sings is. 
which is awesome. And also, the other side of that, Stephen Sings knows what they're going to be doing up front, which is very, very good. Very, very exciting to see. I don't think Stephen Sings is a top three Jack linebacker on this roster. I think Elijah McAllister can do more things than him. I think Jaden McLeod has a more defined role than Stephen Sings. And I think Keldrick Falk's a freak, right? You're going to put Keldrick Falk on the field as much as you possibly can, even as a true freshman. Mm -hmm. But what I do love about Steven Sings is he he's experienced, which we've already kind of stressed how important that is in acquiring talent from the transfer portal. But he makes your roster better because he's better than Dylan Brooks. <laughs> and I think with Dylan Brooks leaving and you adding Steven Sings, that's a trade that everybody does 10 out of 10 times. If you wouldn't, comment down below because I'm really interested to hear why. Yeah, this is something where you take a guy in, in Dylan Brooks who physically had some tools, never really put it together on the field, never really got extended run, and you replace him with a guy. Or ate a hamburger, it looks like. Yeah. You replace him with a guy, or finish his wings. You repl Shut up, Baumhauer's. You, you, you replace him with a guy that um, has been on the field for the guy who is coaching the position now. And yeah. so he's a valuable continuity piece as far as helping everybody else understand what is different under Jeremy Garrett that was not the same way under wherever they came from before. Because it's a brand new room. Elijah McAllister's at Vandy. Keldrick Falk and Brenton Williams are in high school. Like, right. it's a completely different room. So bringing in the person, he's almost, having not met him, no, no, you know, I'm not going to say he's a second coach on the field, but he's better able to help everybody understand what Jeremy Garrett's trying to do. And I think mm -hmm. that's, a big piece that we don't think about when we say, well, where's his playtime? His playtime is probably Monday through Friday in walkthroughs, in practices, helping guys understand what Jeremy Garrett's installing. That's probably where his biggest contribution is, but he's an experienced player. If something happens, if he has to step up and take on a bigger role than you're expecting mm -hmm. due to injury, like with Eko Leota getting hurt last year and Marcus Bragg stepping up and, and get, playing a bigger role than we thought, he gives you a higher floor in that case than Dylan Brooks did, who uh, the only playtime that he saw was on the video game that night after the contest was over. So you you kind of said broken up what I what I wanted to say right here. I think adding Steven Sings is like adding Marcus Bragg a year ago with a higher floor. Makes sense. And we all take that. Yeah. We all take that, right? We all going into this said... You know, let's get a pass rusher, which they did with McLeod. And I think Sings can also be that pass rusher. I don't think he's quite as good as stopping the run as like an Elijah McAllister. I don't think he's quite as good as rushing the passer as Jaden McLeod. But I mean, the guys listed at 6'3", 255. It seems like their ideal Jack linebacker size is 6'5", 260. So, I mean, he's just under it, right? He's just under it. They may get up to yeah, I mean, he may get up to 260 by the time Falk rolls around. We'll see. So, I like it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, I love the depth. They needed more Jack linebackers. I said going into the weekend, Auburn is a pass rusher away from me changing my prediction from 7 to 5 to 8 and 4. I don't think this did it, but I do think it's better. I do think the roster gets better, and all of a sudden, I feel a little bit better. You know, if Elijah McAllister has to miss three games for whatever reason, like I feel better about it. So. Yeah. Like it's, it's one of those, it raises the floor. There's no reason to not like this. And honestly, I'm in the perspective now of, okay, if I'm given a number that's right there at, at that seven, I'm probably taking the over now because I have that little bit more confidence. If something were to happen, you've got one extra guy who can help out. Uh, let me see the number, the number that I'm seeing is six and a half is kind of where it still is as of now. It, that feels like that's an easy smash on the over. Yeah, I think so too. And I don't think it's going to change. Everybody has it there. So we'll talk about that in just a second. As well as Auburn baseball, the hottest team in college baseball, in the country, in the world. And I've got I've got something to say about it. Then Lindsay, I'm going to let you spout off. I'm going to let you run a victory lap because because I think you deserve it for sure. So uh, all that coming up right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show Brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Like you said, if the six and a half, if you're listening to the show, or if you're in the YouTube comments, or even the Locked on Auburn Discord, or Auburn Twitter, you're constantly saying seven and five, eight and four, nine and three. That's what I'm seeing from Auburn fans across the board. And I think, 
I think it's time to put our money where our mouth is as a fan base and go to FanDuel and pound that line. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thank you, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. And pound the over. And all of a sudden, FanDuel's going to say, you know what? Maybe we're wrong. Let's give Auburn some love and up it to seven and a half. So let's do it. Let's just do it. Uh, seriously, though, head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Like Lindsay said, you're going to no sweat first bet up to $1,000. So just do it. Just bet on Auburn this year. There's nothing to lose if it's the first time betting on FanDuel because they are taking care of their new customers. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Also, I was looking at the Heisman odds. Bo Nix tied for second. The second best Heisman odds out there. Don't know why you would do that, but still good for Bo Nix. Good for Bo Nix. Once again, head over to FanDuel. Yes, Lindsay? Uh, Hunt, Jarquez Hunter is not on there. Travis Hunter is on there. The cornerback. Mm -hmm. Jarquez Hunter is not on there. Right. What's going on here? Right. Uh, all right, so head over to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn get that no sweat first bet. Uh, FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and the Locked On Podcast Network. Auburn baseball. I yeah. love Auburn baseball, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Butch Thompson is my favorite coach probably ever. He's definitely my favorite coach at Auburn. I, I, I love Butch Thompson. And I said this last week. I'm sorry. I gave up on you. I gave up on you about a month ago, and I feel silly. I feel exposed. And I, I know that saying I'm sorry is not enough, but it is. It is, or I hope that it is. And so I just want to put that out there. I apologize to you, Butch Thompson. I apologize to you, uh, all the seniors that we watched on Senior Day, that they certainly deserve more out of me and probably other fans. But, Lindsay, this team, this team is red hot right now. Yeah, this team has won seven straight games. Uh, eight. They, I'm sorry, eight straight games. I knew that. Don't they tell have them won, short like I did. They have won eight straight games. They are sitting at 17 SEC wins with an RPI of 15. And in the last decade, we went back and checked this, in the last decade, there has not been an SEC team with 17 wins in the, in the conference and an RPI of 17 or better that has not gotten to host a regional. Oh, now, I am not saying that Auburn is hosting a regional because this year has a lot of really wild and crazy stuff. But mm -hmm. last year, Auburn did it with a top five RPI and 16 wins. You are within striking distance of having a higher RPI. You go to the SEC tournament, you have Missouri in round one. If you win that, you play Vanderbilt, who has a top five RPI, top five, top six. Uh, and then if you beat them, you, I mean, you probably, you're probably facing like a Florida who has a top five. So the path is there to host a regional and a lot of people gave up on this team, but you should not feel bad because a lot more people outside of Auburn did not believe in this team at all this yeah. year. Auburn came off of their second trip to the college world series in three full seasons. They did it in 19. You obviously lost 20. They did it in 22. And yet, Auburn was picked by D1Baseball.com, by Baseball America, by the SEC coaches poll to finish last in the SEC West. Zach Blackerby, where do you think Auburn is in the SEC West now that the regular season is concluded? Well, they're not last. They're, they're not sixth. Not they're not fifth. They're not fourth. They are third. They are third in the SEC West. They are two games behind LSU and three games behind Arkansas. If did, you if did you Auburn, move the Arkansas series to the end of the year, yeah. Auburn could possibly have won the SEC West. Well, LSU didn't lose a series all year, right? Well, see, that's the funny thing. They didn't lose a series all year until they came to Auburn, and mm. they dropped two out of three. And the Yikes. only one that they won was the one with the number, the projected number two overall pick in the draft, who, side note, literally probably the best college pitching performance I have seen in 20 It was years. incredible. It was insane. Yeah. Paul Skeens is a machine. Draft him number two, Pittsburgh Pirates. Be happy. Shout out Dad yeah. Daddy. He's a Pirates fan. But, uh, but no, so Auburn is a number five seed for the SEC tournament. They right. have the late game on Tuesday. They play uh, the final seed to get in, which is, shocker, Missouri, who you just right. swept over the weekend. So mm -hmm. Auburn plays them on Tuesday. And again, if you beat them, you go on and you play Vandy. Uh, to win the SEC tournament, it's going to be a bunch of games. 
it feels like you probably don't have the pitching to do four or five straight games, but two like play you should be able to play two or three games in the tournament. And either way, you have a pretty good case to host uh, and and hopefully the NCAA feels the same way when they make the the decisions on selection Sunday. Yep. So expectations moving forward. Do you expect Auburn to win two games in Hoover? Here's the hard thing. Auburn has not won a game in the SEC tournament since 2019. They beat Tennessee in the opening round. Flip side of that, Auburn's gone to Omaha twice yeah. since the last time they won a game in the SEC tournament. So it doesn't That's necessarily crazy to think matter. About. Yeah, like you can't win in Hoover, but you can win in Omaha. So yeah. All you wild. do is all Butch Thompson does is win regionals. That's all Butch Thompson does is win regionals. Oh, and supers. He wins them both. And so uh, I feel like Auburn has a good chance of at least getting past the first round, the single elimination round. If you get past that, you guarantee yourself three games. Um, based on how the weekend shook out, doubleheader on Friday, uh, uh, one game on Saturday, Tommy Vale only going two innings on Saturday because he was sick Thursday night and Friday. I mean, he's getting IVs on Friday trying to be able to pitch that day. It uh, feels like you should be able to have him. We'll find out for sure late Monday afternoon what the plan is there. But I feel like Auburn should get to play three games in the SEC tournament. Uh, and if they can, and obviously they'll have to win one to get to that second round. If they do, it's a very strong case that Auburn should get to host a regional for the second straight year. Mm. That'd be incredible. That yes. would be wild. And of In course, if you're that, you've got a chance to host a super. Like you just never know how it's going to go. Exactly. Never know the, how it's going to go. In the meantime, until you get a chance to watch Auburn baseball on Tuesday night, we wrote up uh, the season awards on Auburn Daily. We're giving out the MVP. Best and by pitcher. we, you mean you mean you? You wrote it. Andrew Stefani and I consulted together to decide on who won the awards, okay. and then I actually wrote it up. So it. go read it. It's a great piece, uh, and then be hyped about how far this team could go because when this offense is hitting like they are, and this pitching staff is as cohesive and shut down as they have been, this team can hang with anybody in a three-game series. There's mm -hmm. not a single team in the country you're afraid of. No, they've showed it. They've showed it. They did it against the number one team, and they went to the number two team, South Carolina, and did it. Yeah, they, they've done it. So Beat them in back-to-back -back weeks. Lindsey Crosby, how can people check out everything that you've got going on right now? I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball, the show, Locked in MLB Prospects, available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. You can find the Auburn baseball writing, auburndaily.com. And then if you're a Braves fan, a lot of you are, bravestoday.com. You can find all my written work at all of those places as well, auburndaily.com, bravestoday.com. And we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.